So right now we are bringing in our Ryan Wilson to talk about some bold predictions for week two in the NFL. And Ryan, we're calling these Fridays Monday morning headlines. So basically saying what we're going to see on those newspaper clippings coming Monday morning. So we do want to start off with the oldest NFL rivalry rivalry rather. So what is going to be the headline come Monday morning here? Just so there's no confusion, not a green screen in my basement, not on some <laughs> lake in, in, uh, in Alabama with hey. Peyton Max. So, uh, uh, exactly. Yeah, that we'll is exactly the takeaway. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> so, what does this mean for the headlines, though? We're talking Aaron Rodgers, we're talking Justin Fields, we're talking Bears at Packers. Last week, Aaron Rodgers, as he's been known to do from time to time, checked out after halftime and, and didn't really seem interested in how that game in Minnesota. He typically bounces back by scoring somewhere in the neighborhood of 100 points. I expect that to be the case uh, this weekend as well. You can see it here on uh, this headline, nice and tidy. Rodgers returns to Hall of Fame form. Some numbers for you, Jacqueline. Uh, Rodgers is 22-5 and all-time against the Bears, 61 touchdowns, 10 interceptions. Uh, the last 11 games, 10-1. and the last six games, 6-0, and the average margin of victory being 11.1 points. That feels like how this is going to unfold. I know there's a new coach, a new GM in Chicago. Justin Fields looked good at times last week, but the weather was certainly a factor in how that game unfolded against the 49ers. Uh, Aaron Rodgers looked extremely disinterested. You see him here. These were his uh, feelings on the sidelines as his young wide receivers continue to not do what he wanted them to do. I think they'll get that sorted out this week. I think they'll make progress in terms of them being on the same page. And I expect Aaron Rodgers just to dominate because he typically bounces back. He told us in the past to relax, so I'll relax on this one and expect him to do what Aaron Rodgers has typically done when he takes the field and put, hurting on, uh, put a hurting on the Bears team. All right, so we'll see if Aaron Rodgers can have a better week two performance than week one. So next one, Ryan, we're talking about the Bucks at the Saints. Tom Brady, he's winless against New Orleans during his time in Tampa Bay, but does that continue? What do you think? Yeah, this is a weird one. This makes you, uh, I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but this makes me feel like we're living in a simulation where Tom Brady can beat every team to death and then he can't find an answer for the New Orleans Saints. And that includes with uh, Jameis Winston, a quarterback. The last time these two teams played, as it turns out, was October 31st, 2021. That's when Jameis hurt his knee towards ACL and didn't return for the rest of the season. They still won that game with Trevor Simeon. For some reason, Tom Brady struggles against these Buccaneers, and I think it's going to be a situation where Jameis Williams, Winston, excuse me, balls out. He has played so well since coming from Tampa Bay over to uh, from uh, to, to the New Orleans, excuse me, and Jameis Winston reinvented. The story continues. Uh, some crazy numbers. Tom Brady since coming to Tampa Bay, 25 and 5 uh, against every other team, not the Saints. Against the Saints, somehow he's 0 and 4. It does not add <laughs> up. In those four losses, he has six touchdowns, nine interceptions. Meanwhile, Jameis does what Jameis does. He's 6-2 and two with the Saints, 16 touchdowns, just three turnovers, which is a marked difference from what we saw when he was in Tampa Bay when he threw often more interceptions than touchdowns. Not asked to do quite so much in New Orleans. That obviously helps. He's playing smarter, not forcing the ball downfield, and he has a really good defense. And I think all told, we're going to see a repeat performance, and somehow Tom Brady is going to be 0-5 when he leaves New Orleans this weekend. Yeah, and Ryan, you know, it doesn't really help that the Bucs are just banged up in the wide receiver room. You got Chris Godwin, Mike Evans, Julio Jones. I don't I think that's a disadvantage for Brady as well. Absolutely. And we saw uh the head coach talked about this, Todd Bowles, that maybe Mike Evans will be back. Uh, we'll see where Chris Godwin is, the hamstring injury. He's coming off the ACL as well. So those are going to be legitimate concerns. Now, look, they look great against the Cowboys. Turns out the Cowboys may not be very good, uh, even when Dak Prescott was healthy. We'll see if that changes uh, against the New Orleans team, where, as we've talked, they, they've, they've struggled, admittedly, under Tom Brady. Uh, Tom Brady looked razor sharp for a 45-year-old, and he is one to, know, uh, one to be known to hold a grudge. So if you want to doubt him, do so at your own risk. That's on me, but I feel like this is going to be Jameis's day uh, yet again over Tom Brady. I can't believe that's a sentence that left my mouth. <laughs> All right, and <laughs> Ryan out west, we have the Seahawks at the 49ers. Geno Smith, he got his first win on Monday night. So are we going to see another performance like that from Geno Smith, or is it an opportunity for the 49ers to get it right? Imagine living in a world where perhaps the Denver Broncos traded for the wrong quarterback on the Seahawks roster, and his name is Geno Smith. Uh, my goodness, the game he played last week, you see it here, 
Broncos <laughs> traded for the wrong quarterback. You have to laugh when you read that because Russ Wilson is clearly Hall of Famer. But Gino, to his credit, he played out of his mind. Pete Carroll coached out of his mind. Pete Carroll seems like a nice old guy, just turned 71, I think. That man control you if you make him angry, and that's exactly what happened last week. We saw it in the game. So can Gino do a repeat performance against the 49ers? I, I think he can. He played so well during the preseason. He was so efficient last week in the first half especially uh, that the Broncos really had no answers. Now, look, the Broncos' defense was is really good. Uh, the 49ers' defense is also really good. The difference is you wonder what is Trey Lance going to look like coming off that loss in Chicago. We just talked about how the weather was, was a huge factor, how at times Trey Lance struggled against and that perhaps could have something to do with the weather. Kyle Shanahan said, I can't judge a young quarterback in those conditions. And, and that's a fair concern. Elijah Mitchell's going to be out sometime with a knee injury, the running back. So there are some, some niggling issues uh, injury-wise uh, for the 49ers. Geno is playing with a ton of confidence. And by the way, he has a running game. They might get Ken Walker back at some point soon. They have DK Metcalf. Uh, they have Tyler Lockett. They have Noah Fant. Guys that can make plays. And the defense will be without Jamal Adams. But they picked it up after he left and played well. I, I think this is an opportunity for the Seahawks to, to get to two and oh, which I don't think anyone outside of Seattle expected. Yeah, unlikely we'll see some guys sliding, you know, on the slip and slide for this matchup. So the last divisional game here that we want to talk about, it's the one I've been waiting to hear your take on, Ryan. I grew up a Jags fan. I'm from like the Jacksonville area. So I just want to know, am I going to be a happy Jags fan on Monday? Yeah, so I, I wonder, I, we'll have to talk about this later, but I wonder if you had to spend your, your youth listening to Pete Prisco on Jacksonville Radio rail <laughs> against various Jacksonville players. That's a conversation for another time. But listen, I think the Jaguars are going to make something magical happen after somehow losing that game last week in Washington. I love Doug Peterson. I, I love Trevor Lawrence. I love Travis ATN. Here's the headline. Can't blame Carson this time. Carson's down in Washington, of course. And I'm going to take this from Zach Kiefer, the athletic, who covers uh, the Colts team. And he had these, these stats, which are mind-blowing. Indy has dropped seven straight road games to the Jaguars. That includes one game in London. The Jags have just seven home wins since 2019. I'm sure you're aware of that, Jacqueline. But here's the other thing. Three have come over the Jaguars. They're the NFL worst 33 and 81 since 2015, the Jaguars are. But 8-8 eight and eight versus the Colts over that same stretch. They have two wins against the Texans, three against the Tennessee Titans. Eight against the Colts. What is going on? That is hard to explain. It feels almost like the Tom Brady... New Orleans situation, but this team in Jacksonville is much better than it was a year ago for obvious reasons. The, the coaching staff is, is hugely upgraded, but I think Trevor Lawrence is playing with more confidence. They have to do a little better job protecting him. We saw that last week where he was struggling uh, with, with the protection, but they have playmakers. That defense is young and fast and strong, and for some reason, the Colts can't win on the road against Jacksonville, um, which is funny unless you're a Colts fan, so that could be good news for the Jaguars get their first win of the season. All right, come on, Trevor Lawrence. We, we believe in you. Okay, lastly, Ryan, we can't let you go and make all these headlines without giving us just a true upset. So tell us who can make us some money this weekend. Uh, listen, I'm not willing to go that far. I'm just getting crazy here. But the spread's <laughs> 10 points. So, you know, it, it, you got to have some real faith in Lovey Smith that the Texans can can go in there and beat the Broncos after what happened to Denver last week in Seattle. I think Russ Wilson's going to have a lot to prove in his first home game where he will not get booed, presumably, which is what happened last week in Seattle. Nathaniel Hackett, who had a terrible showing uh, in his first game as head coach, hopefully he can bounce back. Uh, again, you know well that he had success as a Jacksonville OC back, black, uh, back when Blake Bortles was there and they made that run to the AFC title game. You didn't see that last week, and you wonder what happens. So hopefully he gets that sorted out. But I wonder if the Texans, Davis Mills uh, is a really good young quarterback, he said last week, even though he played pretty well, threw a couple touchdowns, uh, no interceptions. He did get sacked three times, and he actually said this. I need to learn from Geno Smith. Again, sentences you never thought you'd say out loud. How Geno stepped up in the pocket, used his feet to win last week against Seattle, uh, against the Broncos. Davis is athletic, even though he's, he's a pretty tall guy, and he thinks that he could, he could step up in the pocket, maybe win some yards with his feet instead of taking those sacks in critical situations. That'll put the Texans in a better chance to win. They ended up tying that game last week, 2020. Probably should have won the football game. So there's a chance at plus 10 that I like Houston. I don't know if they're going to go there and actually beat the Broncos, but that would be a fantastic story uh, in terms of what Russ Wilson and Nathaniel Hackett are up against just two weeks into the season. All right. Thanks so much, Ryan. I hope you are right about the Jags. So fingers crossed there. It's really good talking <laughs> to you, my friend. <laughs> And you can also check out Ryan on the Pick 6 podcast. In the latest episode, they're actually recapping the Chiefs and Chargers Monday Night Football matchup. Make sure you download, follow, and take a listen.
Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.